The human ear is the organ that enables hearing and balance. Most of the human ear is encased in the temporal bone, especially the petrous part. The human ear has three parts. The external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The external ear, as you are seeing, is formed by the pinna and the external auditory canal, which receives sounds and transmits them to the middle ear via the eardrum. The eardrum or the tympanic membrane is circular and flexible and begins to vibrate as the incoming sound waves strike it. The middle ear consists of an air-filled cavity called the tympanic cavity. And this includes the three bones and their attaching ligaments, the auditory tube and the oval window. The three small bones are called the malleus, the incus and the stapes respectively, the latter being the smallest bone in the human body. These bones form a bridge between the eardrum and the inner ear through the oval window that covers the cochlea. They function together to receive, amplify and transmit the sound from the eardrum to the inner ear. The inner ear sits within the temporal bone in a complex cavity called the bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth has three parts, a central area known as the vestibule, which contains two small fluid-filled recesses, the utricle and the saccule. The vestibule connects to the bony three semicircular canals, anterior, posterior and lateral are angled at right angles to each other and the cochlea, a structure that has a spiral shape similar to a snail shell. Now, I talk about the membranous labyrinth. The three semicircular canals are responsible for dynamic balance. The utricle and the saccule enable balance when stationary. The cochlea is responsible for the sense of hearing. These structures together create the membranous labyrinth. The membranous labyrinth is filled with fluids called endolymph and when these liquids move, they create fluctuations in the cochlea's hair-like structures called the stereocilia, which finally transforms the mechanical energy of the sound waves into nerve energy by creating electric impulses that are sent to the brain through the auditory or vestibulocochlear nerve. The auditory or the eustachian tube is a narrow tube of approximately 3.5 cm in length. It connects the ear to the outer part of the nose and acts as an equalizing valve. This ensures that the pressure on the either side of the drum is balanced and that sound can be heard correctly. The internal jugular vein can be seen exiting through the jugular foramen. The internal carotid artery enters the carotid canal in the petrous portion of the temporal bone. Here, you can see the facial nerve exiting the stylomestoid foramen.